Typically, we use only one type of method of grabbing and moving around objects within our VR space, and that's by physically going up to a position, grabbing it, and then moving it somewhere else. In this video, however, I wanna show a different method of doing that in the form of a gravity gun. What we'll be doing is using a physics handle in order to grab an object and then move it around, simulating physics the entire way. But before we go ahead and jump into this video, if you enjoy the video and you would like to see more like this, go and hit the like and subscribe button down below. It lets me know that you guys enjoy this video and want to see more just like this one. And with that, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. All right, so before we go ahead and start actually uh, creating our physics handle and all that, uh, there's a couple quick things I do want to know here. First off, I did clear out all of our space here. Uh, the only thing we're going to end up using for this tutorial from Unreal Engine 5's default VR template is going to be the pistol here and then the grabbable small cube, I think is what it's called. Yes, small cube. So the way that we're going to do this is we have two objects here that we're going to be working with. So right now we can grab both of these and use both of them pretty much in the same way. Uh, the only difference being that we can actually shoot our pistol here. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our pistol here and we're going to make it so that way we can uh, we can trace out and we can find if we're hitting the cube and if we are we're going to bring the cube to us and have it be grabbed by our pistol here. Before we jump into our pistol we're going to check our cube here because there is one thing that we need to check for and that is that it is in fact simulating physics. Now if you're using any kind of grab actor that Unreal Engine provides you should already have physics being simulated at the start. But if you want to be sure, uh, I'm going to click on our grabble static mesh here, which we have selected. And if we actually go into our static mesh, we can actually type in, uh, I just put in PHY, but physics is what you want to look for. And you can actually see that we are simulating physics. And that's what we want to be sure of in order to make sure that this is going to work correctly. Um, and you're going to want to make sure that that's correct for any other actor that you want to grab. So now let's go ahead and jump into our pistol here. So I'm just going to jump right over here into the world outline. So like I said, right now it is basically set up to just spawn a bullet or a projectile in this case. I don't think it calls it a bullet. I think it just calls it projectile. Um, and you can also see here, we also have a trigger axis, which we're actually not gonna need that either. So I'm actually going to remove all of this cause we don't need any of this. And I'm just gonna leave us with our event trigger pressed. This is what is used by the player in order to simulate the pressing event. All right, so now that we have our event graph cleared out, let's go ahead and jump right over here into the viewport for a quick second. So there's two components that we want to add to our pistol. First one is going to be a physics handle. There we go. And I'm just going to leave it called physics handle. It doesn't have any world location or anything like that. So I'm not going to worry at all about that. Um, I'm not going to worry any, about any of our settings over here, but you're welcome to look at these if you'd like. The second component that we need to add is a scene component. And I'm actually going to call this uh, Q, let's call it Q position. And this actually is something that we want to reposition. And I'm actually going to reposition it right over here in front of the muzzle. Let's go ahead and actually bring this down just a bit. There we go. And also I'm going to rotate this a little bit too. So I've actually run this test a couple times and I found that rotating it a little bit is actually going to be pretty good for later on in our tutorial. Um, you of course don't have to, there are alternative methods and I'll talk about that once we get to that. So uh, right over here, I actually, before I do anything here, I want to bring in a couple of other events we're going to need. We're also going to need a released event. And this is going to, again, be from our VR Interaction BPI. Uh, and it's going to be right there. Oh, nope, that's not it. Event trigger released. There it is. And the reason for this is we can actually check our VR pawn, which I actually have open up here. And our VR pawn actually has a trigger release, which we're going to need in order to release our cube later on. And then the other thing that we're going to need is the event tick. Um, and I'll get into this in a second. We don't need it for a whole lot, but we will need it for repositioning our cube. All right, so over here in our pressed, the pressed is probably gonna be the most uh, difficult part of this whole thing. So to start out, we're going to need to do a line 
trace. Now this is where the positioning of our scene component uh, uh, that I had mentioned uh, kind of comes into play. So the reason I rotate it is because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, for our start position, we're going to get our cube position. And that's quite simple. Let's just get the world location of our cube or, or of our scene component, my bad. But the difficult part is going to be the end position. So typically I usually start with get forward, um, get forward vector. Uh, since that's just a very simple way of getting a distance out far. Um, and actually, if we had left it the way it was, the forward location actually is going to be off here to the left, which is why I just rotate it 90 degrees. There is, of course, an alternative, and that's just get right vector instead of get forward, but I figured just rotating it would be a little bit easier. So we're going to get the forward vector of our cube position, and we're going to want to multiply this. And this is going to need to be multiplied by float, so I'm actually going to just convert this vector to float or rather float to this vector. And I'm actually going to set this to value, let's say 500. And then these two, this world location and this get forward vector multiplied by 500, all needs to be added in. Now, in case you're, you've never seen this kind of setup before, if you want to make your line trace go out any further, you can increase this value. If you want to be any less, of course, you can decrease it. This is basically how far out we're going to go. Um, from our forward vector. Typically, I think this is going to be some value under one for all X, Y, and Z. So multiplying it by 500, it will help us get a further value. Um, and then we don't need to do anything else here to the line trace. Uh, the only thing that maybe you might want to do is enable the debug to make sure that you're ca uh, casting, tracing in the right direction. Um, but that's entirely up to you. Okay, so over here, uh, after we've line traced, we're going to want to get our return value and we're going to want to make sure that we did in fact hit something. That's going to be our first step. Now, assuming we have, let's go and break our out hit here and I'm going to drop that down. Now, assuming we did, we're going to want to get our hit component and we're going to want to check to make sure it is simulating physics. Branch. Now, I would mentioned this at the beginning that you do want to make sure that whatever you're hitting is simulating physics. This is just going to double check that what we are is in fact simulating physics. And that is it there. So next thing we'll want to do is grab our physics handle. And here we're going to want to do a, let's see, grab component location. Now I do also want to bring up that there is also a grab at location with rotation. So you can actually I'll, you can actually force it to a specific rotation or at least attempt to based off of what um, what collisions it will allow. Um, if it's colliding against a wall, for example, it might just flatten up against the wall rather than try and force its rotation to whatever you want it to be at. So I'm actually going to just do grab component location though, since that's all we're concerned about for this tutorial. The component we're gonna pass in is going to be this hit component that we hit. And let me actually go ahead and drag off here. Uh, create some reroute nodes. There we go. And the last thing we're going to want to do is get world location of our component that we're hitting. And I'm just going to put that right under and drag that up. So that will be our grab location. You, of course, can reposition it to, ha to try and force it to a different location on the cube. But I'm just going to leave it at the cube central location. Okay, let's go and bring this down just a little bit. And we'll go and start here with the trigger released. Now these are both pretty easy. So the trigger released, all we're gonna to need to do is grab our physics handle and I believe it's release, yep, release component. And that's all we're gonna to wanna to do when we release the trigger. Our event tick is gonna be different. So right now it doesn't automatically update position or anything like that. So in order to update our position, what we're gonna to wanna to do is grab our physics handle and we're going to want to set target location. And again, we also have set target uh, rotation or set target location and rotation if you like. Um, of course, I'm just leaving it as location. So set target location. And then our physic, uh, our new location is going to be our cube position. So we'll get world location there. And that's going to go in for our new location. 
And that's pretty much it. So we're going to go ahead and jump over into the scene and we'll go ahead and give this a quick test and just show it all working. I'm now in the scene. It put me way over there because I'm not in the center of my play space, but it doesn't matter. Uh, so let me go and get as close as I can here. So here we have our gun and our cube. So let's go ahead and grab the gun over here. And you can see now I have it here. Now I can actually press trigger at everything else, you know, ground everything, nothing happens. So if I actually point it here at the cube, you can actually see it came up to the position. This is roughly where the scene component is that we had set. You can also see too, it's kind of spinning there. Uh, which is because we're not trying to force it to a specific rotation. But I can actually go ahead, if I actually hit that against the ground, you can actually see it kind of flatten there. So you can see, I, I can try and push it down into the, the table here, or this little cube, and you can see it's not able to because there, this cube is providing a collision here. Um, now I can't actually do this, hold on. There we go, nice little spin there. And yeah, you can see that as it is, it's all working correctly and I can actually go ahead and also release the trigger and it just drops as it should. And I can pick it right back up again. So that's a pretty neat little thing. And with that, that's how we create a very simple gravity gun for our VR project. As I said, we can implement this same feature into our player as well. It will of course require a different setup since we're likely not going to end up using a line trace and we're going to instead be relying on something like a collision sphere for grabbing or anything like that. But it will at the very least get you started and set up in that general direction. With that, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. And with that, I will see you in the next reality. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters, Boombox Ed, 9X, and Shea.